So yes, my people, welcome again to the Washington XXM podcast. I know it is. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and as and as always, a like is free. Click the like button. It helps with the algorithm for this video to go to the masses. So you know where it's got to go. So let's get into tonight's topic. It's about love. Thomas Sowell wrote a book about um the name of the book is Reader, but it's a great read. I've I didn't read the, I read a few pages of it. Cause I, um I bought it on um online, but let's get into it. He's talking about why people are so comfortable talking about sex and why we have less love and less marriage and stuff like that so let's get into it and share my views on it here we go uh segment three love and marriage the thomas soul love and marriage Peter, quote it may be a sign of our times that everyone seems to be talking openly about sex yeah. but we seem to be embarrassed to talk about love Yes. Yeah, explain most people that. are embarrassed to talk about love right now. Well, I can't quite yeah. explain why that situation exists, but I, I do I have some ideas about the consequences of that. Yeah. That people greatly underestimate the importance of uh, love. The human race could not survive without love. Not just because love, uh, not even love physically. is the strongest emotion. The more baby so. enters the world, uh, there is an awful a lot of things demanded. Uh, uh, and uh, with the baby is in no position to compensate anybody, uh, and so the only thing is that the love of babies is what keeps them alive. And if the parents are so uh, are so, so bad that uh, they don't have that, then the society has backup systems whereby yeah. the baby pa still be. Pa, stick up in here. He said just now. Um, every um, as the strongest, strongest emotion there is is love, but. One of the purest, well, in my view, one of the purest love is the love of a child, a newborn. Because that's, that love, you don't expect nothing in return. You're not doing it because you want something in the return. Because a child is, in a sense, is just pure. So that genuine love you have when a child is born, both from mother, mother and the father, is that it's that unselfish, and uh, it's pure, it's un uh, it's it's not it's untainted it's not tainted at all a love of, of a child so that love is is is, is to me is the highest of all but love as, as he said people talk about sex right now there's this hookup culture nobody want to fall in love no one want to um to experience that that fluttering of the heart that butterflies they get when they meet someone no that's gone everybody just hook up boom bang hit hit hit, hit and then out yeah, let's continue kept alive mm -hmm. again the Thomas Sowell reader love is one of those bonds which enable people to function and mm -hmm. societies to flourish without being directed from above yes yeah, because love we, we, without we love we'll we 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 just be savages basically and work out our interrelated interrelated lives without the help of the anointed yes and the, of course the theme that runs all the way through this book as we've already established is the anointed, the intelligentsia. And what you're saying here is in fact a kind of brutal analysis. You are saying that their drive to power yes. is so extreme that in some way it leads them to smother their own natural instinct toward love and to disregard it in other yeah, people. Yeah, you do have people that suppress, they what fight to keep love, that love, 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 love from because people because they want, they want to be hurt, fear. To live without the Again, fear is a big motivator in people who are loving, expressing the love of someone. There's, there's so fear, rejection. Let's go, continue. Raising from guns to automobiles. That uh, the, the whole thing, you know, the birth. They, you know, I think I see an answer to Occupy Wall Street. It's Tom Sowell, and we're going to call it Love Guns. The guy, he's a brilliant guy, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but go ahead, explain that. that ordinary people leading their own lives w w without any uh, need to uh, seek, seek direction from, from above, from the anointed, uh, that annoys them. Otherwise, they, they would be cut out of this loop entirely. All right. Marriage. When he's talking Again, about anointed here, here, don't think he's talking about God or Muslim. You think he's talking about anointed? He's talking about, he's talking about the, the higher ups, the one that man, man, monetize marriage. Basically, are in fact better off by almost any standard you can think of. Close quote. Well, income. People who are married have higher income. Uh, domestic violence. The rate of domestic violence in marriage is a fraction of what it is among people who are simply living together. Yeah, the abuse of children uh, in married couples uh, families is a fraction of what the, what the abuse of children is 
I'm among people who are simply living together. So if you put it to an empirical test, it's just very clear that marriage makes a difference. Among blacks, black married couples have had a poverty rate in single digits every year since 1994. So there is a difference. Now, no fault divorce, making divorce yeah, easier just begins in the right 60s, I guess, is when it really picks up steam. There are a few states earlier than that. No fault divorce is now uh, commonplace throughout, across the country. Most recently, we have gay marriage. Mm. Uh, New York, what New York is, I guess, the third largest state by population these days. New York enacted gay marriage. Is there, uh, am I reading too much into, would you see a continuum of a kind of animus against this fundamental institution? Oh, yeah. You would. You, yeah. Fuck, Sky, I uh, think they did push the gay marriage drought, to destroy uh, the family bond. Took it on his structure in need. And Marx uh, decided that, 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 that wasn't going to fly. Uh, and so when he rewrote it, he left that out. But that, but that's been there if you follow the left back over the past two centuries. You see in there one way or another where they try to undermine the decision making autonomy of the family. The Hillary they Clinton, sense it as an enemy from the very beginning. Oh, absolutely. The Hill when Hillary Clinton said, you know, takes a village <laughs> to raise a child. Result. Uh, and someone said it takes a village idiot to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. Because people say it all over, it takes a village to raise a family. But to raise a kid, but not necessarily. See, but it's part of the whole thing. A village idiot really would be able to. That's funny. That's decisions. hella funny. <laughs> but which they pay no price when, they, when, when they're wrong. True. Facts. See, when, 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 the, when the parent raises the child the wrong way, the parent pays the price. Pause. The child... Let's talk about that for a minute. He already said that song. When they say, I uh, take a village, it, technically, it takes a village to raise a child. Yes, like not to physically instill values and raise a child. I mean, in the sense that they, a, a village, a group of people will look out for that child. But at the end of the day, the parent is the one who has to instill the values and raise a child. Because whatever mistake the, the parent make, or the child, child grow up, whatever child, child become, the parent get the blame, not the village. They say the, they say the parent is the father of that issue so yes and um yeah facts that is true and um marriage as you say a marriage when they, when they get married yeah there's a, a bigger income in the home which is because if when they get married and the mother and the mother man and woman work typically a marriage couple have a joint account so all the money goes into that joint account and then now they, they use it to dispatch the whatever so but when you are hooking up or just dating and have live with someone in the house you have separate accounts everything is split everything is oh i'm not doing that i'm not doing that but when it's married now it's like come together and you talk about it and you get something together so in that sense it helps a lot and as he said that um they tend to break up the um this um the the the, the, the which he, he mentioned before he's talking about the government they monitor that they monetize marriage now to the point where it's more financially secure for a woman to divorce a man, take his house, his money, the kid, and then still get child support and still get spousal support with the house. So that's the reason why marriage is failing. And and, it's, and then let's not let people fall in love because no one wants to build up, especially men, we don't want to build up our finance and time and present. And then a woman cannot come and just take all that and just go with it and then you're left out in the cold start all over so that's some of the reason why people are falling less and less in love not because of love itself but because of the the consequences that comes behind it when these are when people fell fall out of love so yeah just continue come down the tubes but these third parties can sit back in their air wherever they're wherever they are in washington or whatever and if the things they tell us turn out to be wrong, it doesn't hurt them. Yeah, for example, yeah exactly. Uh, if, they, if there's something wrong, it doesn't hurt them. Before we introduced sex education to schools in the 60s, the rate of venereal disease had been going down every single year. Wow. Teenage pregnancy had been going down every single year. I think it was the uh, rate of uh, uh, infection for uh, gonorrhea in 1960 was half of what it was in 1950. Mm. So all these things were going down before the... The, the, the left came into the schools with their sex education, and all these things reversed and shot up immediately afterwards. But nobody paid it. Nobody, nobody paid the price for that. Price for it. Mm. Nobody paid the price for that. Facts. 
anyway that's the end of the video so let's um stop it there it's a it's a it's a long interview so that i just choose that part of it to talk about it but um you listen to what you say that when the government steps in like for instance they have oh child abuse not the child abuse they have like if a, if a miss a child can take up the phone and call the cops and say um my mom abuse become pick come come for me so they they put the power in a child hand in so many ways and then try to take the parents especially the father out the home because a father presents in the home a father a real father not just some guy the kids tend to listen to their father figure way more than who they listen to their mom so if, if the government come and take the man out of the house which is charging for any legal crime and lock him up that's gone so you leave a single mother home then it number that's a broken home and then typically there's tons of research shows that and stats that says when a child is raised in a single parent home it typically is it, it's typically um they turn out bad than if they raise it both parents in the house which is a married couple family or i think we say married together and there's a child together because typically um the status the stats says that kids and it's not general you understand there's certain kids that will come come out good from a single parent home but that's not that's not the norm typically is the other way around so the exception doesn't make the rule the rule still overshadows the exception exceptions typically be a minority to the majority so yeah so anyway back to the love love is being pushed out of the um the way right now to governmental to tv programming to social media because social media there's no love from, from these females towards men is men ain't this men ain't no good and men 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 everything is our fault and the emperor they are empowering women to basically rob men because that's all they're doing right now is the women on, online us robbing men and tell teaching other women how to trick men and get them get a man resources and his time and his kid take all it away and uh, monetize it so it's a whole mess but we need to get back to that stage where we can people can fall in love me myself i'm married so and the dating world is crazy god it's, it's a hookup culture and i don't want to go too deep in that because that's a whole other video we talk about hooking up hookup culture with yeah, it's a whole other situation anyway that's that that's it i hope you learned something tonight and from this video so anyway you don't know it is peace one love